I don't know if uh, I, I, sh I will introduce myself, you will introduce your, yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is uh, uh, Dudi, um, also known as a path walker in uh, Avalon Forum. And um, I'm a very technical uh, engineer in software for occupation and very spiritual on nature. And uh, I have a very inquisitive uh, scientific mind. Uh, probing everything that I can, uh, my conscious can expand to, uh, to touch. And uh, I find uh, dealing uh, with such spiritual uh, issues extremely exciting on, I would say, the philosophy, the philosophy side. And very few people, I think, are able to address issues in the philosophical side beside of being on, let's say, anecdotal side, uh, he said that and he said the uh, other way and uh, what happened to me and what happened to the other side. Mm. And um, what else should I say? That I'm well, very excited. When, did, when did you get all, ex when did you get all, uh, uh, get onto the path that you're on right now? I mean, when did that happen? How, how did that take about, uh, take place? Uh, I would say that I had experiences thing, since childhood and um, I had uh, four, four or five times that I was almost died and two times that uh, I had uh, my, uh, my life going on a screen against my uh, thing in a video, you know, my, it's my life, you know, the guy go through. through. And um, I had some, uh, some uh, let's say, uh, paranormal experiences. I'm very, I would say, uh, psychic. I know uh, some people who, uh, who uh, uh, attribute me with some healing powers. And I experienced some floating, physical floating. Mm. And um, I have a deep connection to, um, to, say, to Gaia. And I feel her deeply. And uh, I would like to, uh, to, uh, to share some experience that happened three weeks ago. Uh, Saturday morning, I, I woke up and I was... Uh, I was in heaven. I, I felt like, wow, something happened. It was like, it was, um, um, a superior victory and, uh, all is well and I should stop worried. And, and I felt so grateful and so relieved. Never in my life such, such an event happened. Uh, that I felt so so relieved when 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 I woke up. Usually, when I wake up from a dream, I remember some part of the dream, or I remember uh, um, emotions from the dream. But never in my life I, I felt so so let's say uh, victorious and so relieved from as three weeks ago. And since then, I'm kind of ha happily uh, euphoric. <laughs> and and uh, dancing my way to the to the bathroom and back. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, that's a great experience. I mean, that's uh, a, a lot of people are looking for something of that nature to get them uh, going and getting them uh, to see that there's something more than uh, this world that we're living in because we get caught up in our reality and we see that the reality uh, is the only reference point. <laughs> And then we think that, well, that's, that's the only existence. And when you have an experience like you just described, um, and, and there's uh, different versions of it available too, that it is quite a shifting opportunity for people to kind of say, okay, there's more to this. And then it usually starts them down a path of uh, doing further uh, searching and, and tapping into themselves, right? You're really discovering, who am I? You know, like, what do I, why am I here? What am I doing? Uh, there's got to be more to this than, you know, I got, I'm here and then I'm not here anymore, you know, type of thing. So yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, an excellent, um, experience uh, for you. And, and as you described, you've started some time ago, very inquisitive and, and being very, uh, open to, to question. And, you know, the thing about being, uh, technical analytical sort of thing, 
you tend to want to kind of understand the mechanics and you don't get caught up in the other part of it where it says, okay, well, everything is spiritual, this and that. And we kind of understand it, but we don't understand it. Then we want to get into the mechanics. Well, how does it work? How does all of this? And that helps us connect with our human experience more because there is sort of a mechanics that operates within mm -hmm. our, our existence, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so because we operate on software and we're basically pro programmed machines in a way, if you want to call it that. But before I go into that, uh, I'll say my part, uh, who I am. Well, a lot of people know me as Franco. Um, and uh, as for myself, uh, Franco is somewhat typical human uh, to some degree, uh, not very much though, but uh, in essence, the soul that embodies my physicality uh, has chosen to partake once again on planet Earth. Uh, right now, because of the changes that are taking place, the, the huge shifting that's going on in consciousness and then you know shifting in dimensions, shifting in, in densities and so forth, uh, that because I've had been here, uh, the soul has been here a few times and observed at different uh, times, uh, uh, it basically had decided that in agreement with the group, uh, that it was ideal time to come back and actually play a very powerful role in facilitating with the consciousness shift and bringing back in the operating system, the main operating system of oneness, so that we can actually transform our human experience and planetary expression. Mm -hmm. Now, as for the soul itself, the soul is a not kind of a regenerated human soul. It's actually from a whole different universe. Uh, it has um, it has been evolved quite heavily uh, through the, that process. It has united, combined itself with uh, originally with its other half, which would have been your twin soul perspective that people would talk about. But then it continued to uh, combine with the uh, soul families, and uh, so now it actually basically it's seventy two souls combined into one. Uh, so, basically, each the every, access. I'm sorry. Each every one of us is seventy two souls together. No, each one is just half a soul. If you're incarnating, then eventually, at some point, when it chooses no longer to uh, reincarnate as a single soul, it will start to combine. So, in this case, it will combine as a first your other half because you have a twin soul. The twin soul is basically mm -hmm. dual signature, similar signature. Because every soul has a different signature. It's like an access or code. If you're mm -hmm. talking about computer world, you know, you have a different address for each and every individual computer. Mm -hmm. And each individual human is the same way. It has a separate address. Now, what happens is uh, that helps because the address is quite long. But the, the similarities with the, the various signature um, address will mm -hmm. classify you into soul families, clusters of other souls that are basically, that have selected itself to reincarnate in mm -hmm. various realms and various uh, planets and various galaxies, universes, and so forth. The last digits, usually the last digit in itself the is very specific. <laughs> So yes. For that individual. So you have a very specific signature that right up to the last digit. Mm -hmm. Now, there was an experiment done where we basically wanted to, and when we say we, we're talking about as, as a soul level, as source, the very mm -hmm. essence of source, prime creator type thing, to actually take that one signature, like your signature, and say, okay, we're going to split the signature. We're going to duplicate it and have two identical signatures. And mm -hmm. what happens is that it establishes a very powerful connection and communication between the two souls. So there's another aspect mm -hmm. of you, another soul with an identical signature, which we call your twin soul, mm -hmm. uh, and which you are always connected and communicate the most prevalent with. Now, there are situations which have been occurring over you know some thousands of years but specifically lately what's been happening is that these twin souls in some cases are meeting on planet earth mm -hmm. 
And yeah. this is where people are talking about, oh, I met my twin soul or what they can call twin flame and so forth. That, that occurs. Now, it doesn't always mean that, you know, one, one soul is going to be the opposite as the other. One being male, mm -hmm. the other one being female. That happens. But then mm -hmm. the age factor, uh, so they can be the same sex. They can be a relationship where one can be a parent. The other one can be a brother or sister, whatever. It can be any form, but it also can come one can be three years old. The other one can be 65 years old. But in most cases, that happens mm -hmm. uh, when there's a readiness where the two kind of have to work together or are coming in to accentuate some major growth for one another. So sometimes people say, well, I'm going to meet my twin soul. My, I'm going to be in heaven on earth sort of, sort of thing. Well, surprisingly yeah. enough, that doesn't occur. Uh, that's rare because what happens is when they come, they come very powerfully with an agenda. And the mm -hmm. agenda is to facilitate each other. And that means they can be pushing major buttons for one another. They can be creating all mm. types of scenarios that will advance each other very powerfully. So mm -hmm. I've had many because I do a lot of coaching and uh, facilitating people that are, mm -hmm. you know, going through various progressive growth processes. And of course, mm -hmm. I've met many twin souls over the over the years that have come together or met or whatever. I've kind of worked in mm -hmm. between with them and so forth. And some of them were, were totally, you know, confused saying, well, you know, I met my twin soul by like my heart's expanding and powerfully. I mean, there's such a powerful connection, but we can't even come apart from each other. But then we can't even stand each other. We push each other's buttons. We're doing all types of things. And I go, yes, because the first prime agenda or motive for this is to facilitate for readiness. And if you're not both ready, you know, one could be pushing more than the other or vice versa, but it's necessary at this mm -hmm. point in time to prepare. And then once you're prepared, then you can choose to work with one another. Now, I've also seen a large portion of them. They come together, they do whatever they need to do, and then they go apart. They can't even stay with each other because they're, you know, they're not ready for that aspect, but they come in for a various purpose. Now, what happens is when the two souls have done their work and they're ready to unify, that happens in non-form state. It doesn't mean like two bodies come together. It's when both have left the planet and they will, you know, unite and they become uh, one soul instead of two halves of the same soul. Now, of course, we have other levels of souls, which are basically our soul families, which are still part of us. The signature quite the same, mm -hmm. except for the last, uh, last digits. They're very different. So there's still a powerful connection. Now, mm -hmm. what, what I want to explain, even in your twin soul, they can be on the same planet, which is a small portion. They can mm -hmm. be one is off planet, one's on the planet. One can be on another planet, and one can be on this planet. There's a lot of different uh, combinations. Soul families are similar. Soul families are basically either ones on another, fan, on another planet uh, or in non-form and uh, or they're in a readiness where they're just facilitating through the connections, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that cluster is 24 souls minus your two, your half. So it's basically 12 mm -hmm. souls with a oversoul in the middle, which takes the input from all of it. And then you have all the other souls around it, but you being yourself, I'm just going to use you as an example, has split up. So you're part of that 12 that duplicated into two. So in actual, if you take the duplications, you're, there's actually 24 with the oversoul. But that's connected to another soul family, which is, again, mm -hmm. similar a signature, but the last two or three numbers are different. You know, but there's still a level of connection. So the address, the way it's set up, what we call signatures, mm -hmm. uh, keeps the connection. Now, when we're talking about, when people talk about, um, uh, what do they call it? There's another name for it. Um, soulmates. Soulmates, thank you. Yes. When we're talking soulmates, that's a whole different ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that you're going to have um, a soul family member that's your soulmate, but that happens too. But in general, what soulmates are, are souls that have had various other incarnations, either on this planet or other planets, and they have agreements that they make at time to time as they reincarnate mm -hmm. that they're going to come in 
and play a specific role for you because of certain characteristics and certain things that they've played for you in the past and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so they can, they'll come into your life as your soulmate and they will play various roles. Now, there, are they their twin souls? No, they're not. But they will come in and usually the connection is very powerful and there's a recognition that you're, oh, we're facilitating each other. We've come here mm -hmm. to play and, and so forth. Now, of course, at the conscious mind level, you're not aware of that. But at a soul level, you know that there's an agreement made. And usually the roles are to support one another or to, to stimulate further growth. So there's going to be certain <laughs> roles that play out. Now, when it comes to soulmates, we have many. So it's not just one. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes, oh, I'm going to meet my soulmate and I'm, you know, here I am, right? In heaven. Well, <laughs> yes, here we go again, back into heaven. But in essence, we have many soulmates and soulmates will come and go. They're not there for any duration, including twin mm -hmm. souls. You know, people say, well, you meet your twin soul, it's for the rest of your life. It doesn't work that way. You know, it all serves because the agreements are, if we're going to come together, we're going to play together, we're going to do mm -hmm. it until it serves. When it doesn't serve anymore, then we will part because we don't want to stop things. Specifically now that things are super accentuated, super accelerated mm -hmm. at this moment. So things are moving so quickly at this point that in a way, you're not going to do like we did before. You come into each other's lives and you would lengthen the life expand and say, okay, we're going to be soulmates for from birth to death or from birth to somewhere in between, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now it's, there's so much exchange going on in, out, in, out, in, out. And you'll notice your friends will come, go, come, go. And you're going to have mm -hmm. a lot of different connections that are established because things are changing so quickly in that regard. But I, I attribute uh, this uh, change in, um, in uh, I would say, social environment as um, an attribute of, of uh, growth. Absolutely. And uh, that's one thing. And, uh, and I would say a, a derivative question from from the um, from the subject of uh, soulmates and, and twin souls and how can you um, differentiate uh, personality attributes from soul attributes well there's a difference between the two okay um, how do I explain it? souls will incarnate because they have something that they want to accomplish or achieve mm -hmm. or share on a collective scale. So they will come in with, you know, for example, souls will have past lives. Okay. We'll have lives yeah. from, from these lives being on planet earth, lives from other planets. It will have li uh, recognition and memory from uh, spaces in between where it's between lives and so forth. Now, mm -hmm. What happens, each soul, as they're assigned, they come into its reality of, uh, of existence because a soul is basically a, f a facet of essence source. It's basically prime creator essence. It's the field mm -hmm. of all that is, right? Now, a soul will come into, into its, its uh, separation point, if you want to call that, even though it's connected uh, with that signature for a various purpose and we'll say okay it would designate saying okay i'm going to be in this universe possibly in this galaxy or i'm going to take on non-form mm -hmm. i can stay in angelic form or i can take on as a guide or anything of that nature now normally guides usually go through the incarnational process first so that it gets experiences uh, the mm -hmm. angelic realm kind of doesn't do that it kind of is a more of a reminder an overviewer of things that is taking place so if a soul decides, okay, I'm going to uh, say, I'm going to go play on planet Earth uh, as one of my, it will come in with a list of things that it wants to accomplish and uh, uh, facilitate, but also express so that it actually facilitates other facets. Like if we take a bigger picture of this, mm -hmm. you know, here's two of us talking right now. Every single soul on the planet seven what is it 7.6 billion souls on the planet they're all facets of ours 
they're all facets of us. There's yes. no separation in it. We just kind of created because of the signature we were creating that experience. But each and every one is here for the same kind of similar purpose to come experience, learn, expand, mm -hmm. share consciousness and so forth. Now, as for ourselves, as we've come in on the planet, you know, as the soul comes in and says, okay, these are the things I want to accomplish in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And now, if they're here for the first time, it'll come with a very pure list and say, okay, I want to do this, 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 this. But if it has been coming here for a while or been on other planets, it will basically take experiences from other, from other incarnations and look at it. Okay, I've learned this, 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 this. Uh, I've accomplished this, 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 this. But I still haven't finished this, 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 this. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in as my next incarnation. I will take this with me. Then at the same time, when it's connecting with the soul family, when it's mm -hmm. connecting to the over soul, when it's connecting to uh, the, uh, the, the overseeing souls uh, that are from this galaxy or universe and says, okay, these are some of the things that need to also be taken care of. So it plugs it in. So you come, a soul comes in with some of the list that are mm -hmm. carryovers, are added because you wanted to... Um, accomplish certain things that you haven't even looked at before, but it also takes on certain things from your uh, soul family. It will take on certain things from, um, from also from a lineage uh, point mm -hmm. of connections and also from uh, 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 additional things that it wants to carry on or agreed upon from the, over, uh, the overseeing soul from the galaxy or the universe and so forth. So when it comes in, it says, okay, these are all the things on my list that I want to accomplish. I want to do all of these things here. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's the soul. Now, as for the body itself, the body, you're, say your parents are creating its physicality. Their mm -hmm. genetic code, their DNA plugs into um, to this particular body that's being created in your mother's womb. Now, the body itself will carry the genetic code and DNA from the parents, will carry some characteristics and so forth from the parents, but it's not only from the parents. Mm -hmm. It carries from the lineage, too. Mm -hmm. So it would have that as part of the programming as availability. So it's kind of a platform. It's like saying, okay, these are all the options and these are some of the things that are available. Now comes in the other part, which is going to throw a little monkey wrench into that. Now, <laughs> now we have the thing called identity or entity. Yeah. You've heard of entities. You've heard of ghosts and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. That's not a soul. That's an entity. What an entity... Yes. How about deities? Are they also uh, entities? Deities can be created into entities, yes. But deities are something that we have plugged in and saying, okay, this is more powerful than I am. It's basically an entity that we've okay. labeled deity. Okay? Okay. Now, there's levels to that. So what happens is there's a collective entity for planet Earth which is a representation of the whole human experience. Okay? A soul is not human. A soul is source coming mm -hmm. in to have a human experience. An entity is formulated and created through human operating system and the energies that it's stored and the memories that it's stored and so forth. So, all of us have an entity. Now, it is very specific to our own. So it's an assignment. So what we call the collective entity, if you have a question, you mm -hmm. can ask. If you have the collective okay. entity that says, okay, this needs to be uh, finished. So there's going to be a list of human aspects and so forth, which will carry characteristics. Now, you've probably heard of people that have incarnated and have very strong memories of a previous life that they had for example, say there was a pilot. Uh, there was a, a, actually a video mm -hmm. that was out some time ago. Yeah, a child, a child yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, the child remembers being a pilot, remembers even the, the, the plane that he flew, mm -hmm. what happened, and so forth. Now, is that coming from the soul perspective, or is that coming from an entity perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, because I, it's... I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I believe, I believe it's an entity uh, perspective, because it's late to a specific event. Correct. And, and in Israel, uh, there is um, 
I would say, a tribe called the, the Druze, D-R-U-Z people. And they are a very closed, uh, I would say, sector, a tribe. Um, the, the religion is closed. No one can join. Uh, and they re reincarnate in themselves. Mm -hmm. And and uh, every family have a lots of um, stories of reincarnation, and uh, some some uh, years ago we had uh, in Israel a criminal case of uh, of a child accusing someone that uh, murdering murdered him, and showing the evidences, and it was not they were not able to prove it in in a, in a, in a court because uh, recognition is not uh, let's say uh, evidence right but it was amazing and 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 it's every, every family has it has it and and children uh remember um uh, especially if there are traumatic death if there's a war or murder or something like that that caused the 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 um, uh, the, the death they remember them Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you're correct. It's, uh, so when you're talking about a specific uh, time frame, which is human based, and it, uh, it's like, for example, that, that child, he remembered, you know, being the pilot where he crashed, mm -hmm. whatever ever happened. I don't remember the whole story. But because of that whole rec recognition of all of that, at this point, uh, that is coming from an entity point and saying, okay, well, we need to bring that in to clear that part of it. So to finish that, that part mm -hmm. of it. So, so here it is, you have a body with its mm -hmm. DNA gen gen genetic codes uh, that plays an expression from the family lineage. Mm -hmm. Then you now have a soul coming in and look, uh, sorry, a, an entity looking at it and say, okay, you know something, this would be perfect embodiment to step into mm -hmm. i'm going to only remember parts of it because i don't want to recall all of it i'm going to take part of it out and i'm going to adopt that body i'm going to connect with that body so now you have a body and mm -hmm. you have an entity that makes one unit the soul now the souls are observing all of the different physicalities that are being produced and all the different entities and what it has as a form to play with because it has to look at it and say okay this it's like a car okay mm -hmm. i'm just giving you that an analogy i want this particular type of car that can do these things and have these mm -hmm. options and also give me the opportunity to, to be able to travel in a certain way mm -hmm. so the soul looks at it and says okay i have all these things on my list that i want to do which body which part of the world uh, which um, genetic codes and DNA would be best suited for me and also at the same time what can I adopt and utilize from the entity its perspective too so that it would fit in with what I am coming here to do this um, this approach of of souls uh, selecting um, their um, uh, the bodies and, and the place on Earth or on other planets is very permissive. Permissive approach that every soul choose what it wants. Other teachers um, claim that uh, souls are governed and placed and the more evolved your soul is spiritually can have better choices and more choices. Correct, correct. It does, that's true. Because the, when you are a soul that has very little rec recognition of your essence and your past parts of it, you are being directed. You're being directed and kind of shown where you need to go because you still don't have enough, in, uh, enough um, evolution, what do you call it, uh, enlightenment process. So that means you haven't had enough maneuvering skills so it's not that you're dropped in you're presented with say three options that are best suited and say okay these are your three options these are some of the things you should take and shouldn't take and and then you can go and test ride 
all of them temporarily because souls yeah. actually don't step in a physicality until sometimes it goes in and out during the, the part when it's in the mom. Uh, but at other times it comes in right at the last minute or shortly after uh, the birth process. So yes, you're correct. So the more enlightened it is, more experienced that it is, more choices it has to select because it's more, more skilled. It's like a, for example, you take an adult that has had many experiences and then goes out to select an experience or wants mm -hmm. to go and do something, you could say, well, you know something? Uh, as an adult, I can choose to do this or this or this. But as a child, then you kind of have the parents kind of guide them to some degree yeah. because the child still has a certain level of freedom. But the parents kind of say, okay, you should go to this school. You should do mm -hmm. this. You should learn this and whatever else. So there's more guidance. The same thing with the souls work very similar to mm -hmm. that. So, so it's, it's, it's essence, it's another uh, level of programming. It's a kind of program, as we are cultured, we are programmed. Mm -hmm. So as on a soul level, we are also programmed. So someone or something is programming us and there is probably an agenda. Correct, correct, correct. The souls are, are what you can call programmed so that it actually can accomplish what it wants to, uh, it, it needs to do. For example, if you take a painting, okay, there's, there's different colors, there's different paint strokes, there's, bif you know, if you really take it apart, there's all little dots, you know, in a mm -hmm. sense within that. So to complete the canvas, to have this one whole picture and you need to each each stroke has to be slightly different the coloration everything else be different because if mm -hmm. it's all the same you're gonna have one blank so forth so mm -hmm. when it is programmed and saying okay this is your piece that you have to go accomplish you're going to learn in there you're going mm -hmm. to expand in there you're going to achieve a certain level of expression and evolution or what you can call enlightenment but mm -hmm. you're just a small piece of another piece of the canvas, okay? So you're plugged in there. So you, you, you go out and have those, you're programmed to have those experiences. Now you take that whole canvas, for example, say you say that whole painting, that whole painting is only another piece. So you're looking at it, so that's finished. So that's you, for example, you, you've, your soul goes in and finishes that piece, but it's only part of another piece which makes a bigger part of the picture. But when yeah. that's completed, that's still mm -hmm. only a piece of a bigger canvas and so forth. Like, like a cell in, in an organ, in a body, in a society. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. So you need each cell to be doing something specific to make up that, say that organ, and then that organ mm -hmm. makes up more of that body and so forth, right? So you're taking, source essence which is the whole canvas the full picture but we're just a facet of that you're still part of it there's nothing outside of it but you are programmed conditioned programmed i guess you want to call it programmed uh encoded to be able to go and do that part of it mm -hmm. so sometimes when people talk about well we have to keep coming back and reincarnate because we never get certain things finished it's true because you're not finished that part of what you have your portion of what you need to do so uh, sometimes you incarnate with uh, a, more of an easier life. Sometimes it's going to be more mm -hmm. a challenging life because if you're stuck with a certain program, then how can I say? It makes it so much more difficult for you to maneuver. Now, I know some people talk about, you know, being hijacked or being... Um, harvested and, and so forth and saying, well, you know, the soul is being used for the particular agenda. That really doesn't happen uh, to the level that people understand it. Uh, a soul can get uh, fixated, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. to not be able to finish something and just keeps coming back and saying, okay, I got to go back. I got to go back. It's like that movie Groundhog Day. You know, you just keep restarting that day over and over again. Mm -hmm. So you keep starting your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to be in different places, but you're always with this agenda. I'm not finishing this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back. But it doesn't even give itself an option to look at anything different. It tries to re replicate the similar game the similar incarnation 
Um, and uh, then, of course, if they're heavily, um, how can I say, programmed with going negative all the time, for example, with that mm -hmm. polarity aspect of it, then it comes back with drama, it comes back with a lot of the, uh, until it finally breaks it. So right now, that's mm -hmm. kind of changed because it's pushing to break out of that, even though there are um, specific souls that have been kind of conditioned to kind of force the negative part. Um, it's also giving us the opportunity to break out of that and actually flourish even further mm -hmm. by going through that part of it. Because the souls basically, if they decide, if they agree to play a specific role, like for example, there are positive, negative people, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. uh, or darker people basically playing that role, yeah, the entity matches with the physicality, matches with the soul, but the soul coming into that saying, okay, I'm going to sign up to agree to play this negative role, to, uh, mm -hmm. to be the victimizer for the, and make people victim or try to keep them in this. Until people can actually, and when I say people, I'm talking about souls, when the souls can actually break out of that and say, okay, wow, that was a challenging experience. But look at what I was able to do. I was able to, you know, you know, come out of that. And then you carry even more higher capacity of light or essence mm -hmm. of sourceness because of it. I hear you. My, uh, my video capture is stuck. Oh, I so I see, yeah, I see that. Okay. But I can still hear you. Okay. Um, I hope it will release soon. Okay. Uh, clicking on it. Okay, um, as, as I'm, what I'm understanding from your, your description is that um, soul might, might get trapped in like some kind of uh, obsessive compulsive syndrome, trying to, to achieve some, some goal or let's say it's a, it's a play level. If you go, you play, let's say a um, uh, uh, temple run and, and you, you need to, uh, to go, uh, let's say, level 12, level 14, and so forth, and you're obsessed with that level. But uh, can you see me now? I see you, but you're frozen still. So um, anyways, well, we can continue. I mean, if, if we have to pause it, I can pause it and restart. Uh, okay. you, you can um, log in and log back out. And um, my question is, when we are on, let's say, uh, in the other side, uh, who decides for us? Okay, I'm done with this game. Uh, I want, uh, let's say, uh, reincarnation now. Uh, I'm too tired of, uh, I had so much, much, uh, um, let's say, a uh, hard time this, this time, this, this life, this past life. I want, I want some vacation. I want some reincarnation. And uh, sometimes uh, I want, okay, I, I want to go for, let's say, this very short period, but I want to be, to be on, to experience, let's say, old age only. I don't want to experience all the life of being uh, a child and a grown-up. And so I want to be an old person and so forth. So this kind of, let's say, project management requires lots of uh, cooperation and coordination among others. Yep. Okay. So I would say, who is the director? How the directing is, is, is controlled? Yeah, there, there is no direct director, uh, for example, saying, uh, okay, there's one overseer of the whole thing. There is, but that doesn't give the full, it's usually teamwork, okay? So your, uh, one particular soul will communicate with her soul family, will communicate with uh, the, uh, the, over, the major oversoul that looks after that particular galaxy, for example. And they will review things and look at certain parts of it and decide what to carry on with and not what not to carry on with. So uh, if the soul is saying, no, I want to go back, I want to go back because I want to carry on this, and it sees... It sees that, oh, you're freed up. It sees that, <laughs> yeah, that happens with the internet sometimes. Uh, on, on, uh, I guess the internet's a little weak on your side. But uh, anyways, when it comes to, um, to that, there's kind of a group, uh, 
review. That's probably the word for it. And say, okay, these, if you're going to go back, uh, these are some of the things you need to look at and, and whatever else. But at the same time, uh, I realize that you haven't finished this. And I realize that you want to just keep going back. But at some point, you're not given that that as an open option say okay listen it's time for you to take a, a you know breather and just mm -hmm. become an observer per se uh the soul may turn around and say okay you know i'd like to wait until the energies have changed further before i go back to planet earth for example or it says well for a while i want to go on, on another planet and it looks for a planet that can be supportive to kind of upgrade itself so that when it comes mm -hmm. back it's actually more skilled for example, now, like even my particular soul, for example, it it basically it it is one of the main souls that operates in a certain mm -hmm. galaxy that oversees a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's classified as a planet jumper, it doesn't have any home anywhere. It's like it, and none of us do. But what happens is we establish a home a base where we've reincarnated the most times because we become familiar of that frequency and that's where the soul sits mm -hmm. it says okay this is more, much more familiar because i've had many lives so in my case not to have that or when i say my case my soul not to have that it was just moving from place to place and never really incarnated anywhere any particular long period of time and even then it was more of a temporary projection type thing to gain experience so when it came mm -hmm. here even when it came here it was all, always for short durations and it played very mystical roles each time but in essence just so that it would not come in with uh, uh, specific programming it, it had more of an open platform for example if you've moved around and seen a lot of different experiences you're not coming in with that you know tunnel vision type, type of thing where you mm -hmm. see oh this is all I see and this is my only experience you're kind of wide open and the soul also maintained a source connection through source consciousness universal consciousness mm -hmm. galactic consciousness all in those clusters so it taps into all aspects of that so when it does go and take on an assignment like planet earth mm -hmm. um, it doesn't come in you know with a list of things well i didn't finish this in this life i didn't finish that it didn't come in with any of that it didn't come in with past lives saying oh, i got to do all of this but it came in with an assignment but part of the assignment which was interesting was to fully understand the human experience and that, that means it needed to embody a full human experience uh, engage in it completely and also give it the opportunity to be able to maneuver itself within that and there are souls that do mm -hmm. do that aspect of it so is there just uh, you know a council sometimes there is you know you're going into a council which is basically other souls that you have incarnated with or mm -hmm. have played with or are at, there is no real hierarchy per se but there are different levels of consciousness and experience so certain souls will be involved in modifying planets galaxies universes will be mm -hmm. modifying human uh, physicalities because we're basically light beings. I mean, we're all holographic expressions. We're not really real, real in, you know, we call. This, this is just because of what we call density and the different levels of densities that create mm -hmm. the physicality. Um, but those are just what density is. It's just vibrations and how much light it carries, right? So it looks very real because that's how it's made up with. But in essence, when we're looking at how we're come together, we're just programmed and conditioned and put in in different ways so that, okay, there's a, there's a form that can go uh, and play on a planet and, and this is so forth. Like even our human yes. physicality, if we're looking at the human physicality, uh, you know, we talk about, well, humans have been around for tens and hundreds of thousands of years and have been here for, you know, billions of years or whatever it is. Yes and no. Because if you look at our particular series of physicalities, it's only 15,000 years old. The ones that were here before were different series. 
and there were different programming. The, even mm -hmm. if you, you know, like even uh, Greg, is it Greg Braden? Yes, Greg Braden. Uh, he's been, you know, they, they've found through archaeology, found other human species. Some were huge, mm -hmm. some were smaller, some were looked somewhat simil similar. But when they checked the DNA and the genetic coding, it was quite different. Had not had very little similarities to us. Mm -hmm. The reason is because new series, like were seeded, for example, into planets as new series. So this particular series is the latest series, and of course, we're not even operating from the original design. That that's like a whole conversation on its own. I won't even go there, but we'll try to stay okay. focused on the on the soul aspect of it. Okay. So. In, in the soul aspect of it, yeah, we have a team that kind of helps us walk through uh, to, okay, what's your next assignment, where you come in and, and go out. Now, the difference that has occurred now, which I'm going to be specific with, is that mm -hmm. when a soul leaves planet Earth, for example, when your soul leaves, or my soul leaves, or anybody's soul leaves at this point, when your soul decides to leave the planet because it's done, or made agreements because that's all fluid now because our timelines are all fluid. They're not, you know, rigid anymore and fixed. Um, when it chooses to leave, it now goes through a process which was not quite as, um, as established as it is now. For example, your soul will leave and regardless of what it accomplished or didn't accomplish. You know, if it finished all the things from previous lives from other from your soul incarnation from mm -hmm. other points or entities or anything like that whatever it has that soul it goes through what we call light realms we just call it that and mm -hmm. through the light realms it goes through a purging process it's like a, a complete evaluation it looks at all the things on the list what's been accomplished what hasn't been accomplished say for example there's one on the list that didn't really get accomplished fully, but to full to complete the soul's uh, thing, it will mm -hmm. take that and tap into other souls' experiences that have done something similar, and will plug it in as an experience. Okay, I, I have a question regarding this list. Yes. Okay. Um, first is uh, I would say the issue of uh, sovereignty. Um, Sorry, what was that again? Sovereignty. Okay. Be, being sovereignty. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, being able to make decision and to act on those decisions by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And first of all, if if we assume that uh, we are programmed or let's say uh, conditioned to take uh, specific missions in a lifetime. And then uh, we say uh, we partially passed, and sometimes we uh, we, uh, we fail some, and some we, we are kind of uh, very very good. But we are sick or tired of that, and we want to experience something absolutely different and unrelated. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, in this lifetime I was human; in the next lifetime I would like to experience a river. Okay, so. Where the so can a soul on a different level of development can decide, okay, I want to experience or get out of this game. And uh, let's say uh, I had a rough, let's say uh, I was in the, let's say, Jewish, Jewish uh, uh, gene, gene pool for, let's say, for the last uh, few thousand years. I want out. Mm -hmm. I want, let's say, to stay in the Buddhism or whatever. Okay. When the soul has the sover sovereignty to take decision and say, that's enough. I want out of this. I want to go that way. And uh, I want to decide for myself, for this soul. Let's yes. say I'm now a skin cell. I want to be a level cell. <laughs> mm. Yes, you have, that, you have that option as the soul. So when you are going through that list and whenever you're communicating, you say, okay, like you said, I've done this many times. I, you know, I made the progress I made, whatever I didn't make, 
uh, you know, I'm not, cons I'm not interested in finishing that part of it. So that's where, because you have that particular soul has selected a certain completion, it says, okay, mm -hmm. we can now download those experiences that you didn't finish as part of it to complete that, that part of it. So the other stuff on the list, you can see if it's still applicable or not, if it's still relevant to mm -hmm. where the collective soul is at and where or because if there's already been other souls that have been able to accomplish it then we don't have to replicate it even though it's going to be slightly different we don't have to replicate we can merge all of that part in and then you get mm -hmm. kind of a open platform and say okay now you have an option to be able to select something totally different now some of the stuff will still be applicable but the thing is, the, the list that it comes in, for example, like you gave the example of the Jewish. So you say, okay, I've had the, the Jewish, Jewish gene pool for, you know, 10 times, for example. And normally the soul will not replicate that over and over again. The entity may, yes. But mm -hmm. the soul will say, you know, done one, two, three times, and I don't need to do that again. Because basically it's not coming in to be a Jewish, a Jewish uh, gene pool or be part of that, it comes in to experience what it can learn through the, uh, the gene. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but it can learn that through Muslim. It can learn that through, like you said, Buddhism. It can learn through different experiences. It can be a man. It could be a, a female. It can be, you know, a gen, you know, gender neutral. Mm -hmm. It can be whatever, right? So mm -hmm. in essence, the lists are more generic. They're not, you know, specific to what you would say, I have to incarnate as. Uh, you know, a rabbi for the next few times until I get it type of thing. It's not going to be that specific. Let's take, for example, the um, the lineage of the of the lamas, the uh, the uh, Tibetan lamas, mm -hmm. and um, um, they have uh, some uh, some kind of uh, I would say. Um, authority called the uh, Rinpoche, which are uh, uh, expected to uh, reincarnate again and again and again to lead and to teach. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, is that uh, the choice or they are, let's say, um, abiding by the collective uh, request? It is a, it, uh, the the specific soul has the freedom to accept that, but it is still uh, dictated from the collective souls saying, okay, because of your experience, because of what uh, you're capable of doing, and it sees the bigger picture, it's not going to look at, you know, sometimes the mind gets involved and gets a little difficult to, to sort things out. For example, like if we try to analyze it from the perspective of what we understand, it looks very different than when you're just a soul. Because as mm -hmm. a soul, you do not carry rules to the same degree or programming and conditioning to the same <laughs> degree as a mind would, okay? Yeah. Uh, so it's very different because I've, I've worked with many souls that have left and they come and they present themselves, you know, I've called them in and whatever else. Mm -hmm. And they're very different. And when I've communicated with them, like for even an example, my own mother, she was very religious, uh, very close-minded, very fearful. She had some certain gifts. She was able to uh, see entities. She was able to, but she was so afraid of it, so close-minded to it because she was so conditioned and programmed from childhood that that was evil. All of that stuff was evil, and that was yeah. the you know the, the demons or devils or whatever you want to call it, and only God was God, and Jesus was Jesus or whatever you know uh, her belief systems was conditioned for. So in essence, even though that she you know didn't want to even go there. Now of course I could do the same and and a hundred times over that, but she was more afraid of me. So in growing up and being with her and right to her death and she died at 84 uh some 10 years ago now uh even then up to the, her death she still carried all of those perceptions and everything else and when she died she showed up 
which I had asked her originally, showed up five days after her death. Mm -hmm. And she presented to me in, in um, you know, of course, it's not the same way in our physical form. She looked very similar, but transparent and also through a mind's eye. So she presented this. So I had a conversation with her and was totally a different viewpoint because at that mm -hmm. point there was none of that other conditioning in place in fact mm -hmm. she was so open she says well i didn't realize we can do all of this you know <laughs> and and even the communication because i had asked her a bunch of questions about source and which she called god and everything else and she, and she says wow it's very different now when she showed up a couple of months later she only showed up twice five days after mm -hmm. she left the planet died mm -hmm. and yes two months later and when she showed up the second time she it was a whole different view she goes wow you know if i'm you know excited to be back and i would be excited to come back because now i'm going to come in and i can do it completely different because i'm going to reshape the whole experience mm -hmm. and i'm going to select something that will help me even be able to do it so in fact she had said well if only i understood what i understand now and see it the way i saw it before when I was in form, I would have done things totally different. I would have been completely, yeah, of course. yes. So in essence, you know, there's times when we leave the planet and we, uh, you know, yeah. and say, well, I'm not coming back anymore. And then after you leave and you see it and you make some adjustments, like you're really excited to go back and take it on. Now, of course, you're going to take on different, different, uh, uh, core, you know, path, and you're not going to take on the same thing again. But you could see how it's a completely different view. And working with your guides, working with other souls that oversee the progress of each soul, you're going to be so much more open to. Okay, yeah, I'll take that on. And it's not a big challenge because what we see at the mind level here as drama, as heaviness, as uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's when you from from a soul perspective, you don't have that. The other thing too, that has changed. So when you go now, it sees whatever is applicable, what's not applicable, and releases what isn't. The other aspect that comes into play now, that we uh, we we'll also talk about, is that a soul now does not have to particularly incarnate from birth. You can be a drop in. Mm -hmm. You can come in because, say, there's a body with an entity that the soul is done with. That soul says, You know, I'm done with this experience. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. As long as the body is not too damaged and the entity is not too rigid, another soul looks at it and says, Wow, okay, I can go in at 30 years old or 40 years old or 50 years old and I can take it from there. Now I could choose to, to stay in it for a long time or can choose to stay for a short time and mm -hmm. it's dropping in so there's a lot of that going on right now you know where souls leave and another one drops in so that we don't have to have because if you notice i mean our population in the last 60 70 years has you know quadrupled mm -hmm. practically at this point because i mean if you look back in the what 30s or you know 30s 40s up to at the 50s oh i mean we're only about two billion people we're almost you know you know we're we're at almost eight billion now seven point five plus mm -hmm. so because the playground has become so interesting and then there's so many more souls that want to come in because of what it can experience here but the part we don't understand and totally know uh and people are starting to understand this in small groups is that it doesn't mean that there has to be a new body formulated each time for another soul to step in. One leaves, another one drops back in, and, and so there's all these walk-ins. Mm -hmm. The other part that's happening, and I know I'm going to start blowing people's minds with, because I, but I've been talking about it for a little while now, is mm -hmm. that there's a lot of soul swapping going on too. So your soul yeah. says, okay, you know, this experience is too limited, and I want, for a period of time, I want to go take on another body for a while. And then another soul step into you. And there's soul swapping. So there's experience swapping. It's like car swapping, for example, mm -hmm. you know. And can say, can well, we share? Can we share more than one soul per body? That would be not a jumping in, saying two souls want to govern, but a soul can link into the other soul and play a part in it. 
So you can have a riding soul, if you want to call it that. It will um, not go to, yeah. totally into the driver's seat 100% because remember the one that's taken on as the primary driver. So for example, like you say your car and you say, well, I'm driving the car, but you pick up a passenger. Now you can pick up entity passengers. You can also pick up a soul passenger. Mm -hmm. okay? And the passenger might give you direction, say, you know, I want to go over there. I would like to experience this, <laughs> to experience that. But it's not, it doesn't have the driver. It's not driving the car. It's not the accelerator mm -hmm. and so forth. But it may be pushing you to go and have certain experiences. The same thing, the entity would do that. Okay. Um, regarding that, um, that's, that's an idea coming from uh, sci-fi uh, movies and, and, and books of... Um, two souls inhabiting uh, a single a single body and fighting for the body or uh, trying to, uh, let's say, to hang for the body in order to, to um, a container, a, a temporary container, uh, in order to uh, find another more suitable container. And um, um, that's, that's uh, bring the, the question about um, multiple personalities and uh and uh, what's called in hebrew it's called dibuk i don't know it's called in possession possession is the possession the yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and soul swap and i know i heard that uh on on life threatening conditions uh soul swap also on the operation tables mm -hmm. right yeah and and also uh on uh, when there's come a very traumatic, uh, even not even not uh, life threatening, but very traumatic, souls can go out and go in, and sometimes if you don't uh, have uh, let's say um, experience and know how to protect yourself, if you do if you go for astral travel, so, uh, uh, let's say a hostile uh, soul or entity can take over your body. Uh, what's wow okay you're going into some uh, deeper territory at this moment um swapping let's say soul swapping and 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 let's say yeah uh, um uh place holding correct correct okay uh, so I'll, I'll cover some of that i'm just gonna pause for a moment mm -hmm. <laughs> okay okay um, thank you. Uh, the last question was about the, the subject of placeholding uh, a body and swapping uh, places with other souls. Right, correct. So what happens is, you're, like you said, you know, there can be a, a situation where uh, the swapping could happen through something very traumatic. The soul decides to leave. Could be through, you know, on the operating table, like you said. And the other soul will, uh, another soul will step in. Um, but there is also what you can call placeholding uh, situation where a, the soul says, I, "I need to leave the body for an extended period of time. It could be a week, could be a month, could be a year, mm -hmm. you know, whatever." So basically, uh, to keep the, the the physicality and the entity on somewhat track, it kind of makes an agreement with a soul that would be somewhat in the same category. I mean, it's not gonna to be totally off the charts, you know, being completely different uh, in, in its own wanting its experiences. So one that can mm -hmm. actually step in. So then that one will go in uh, and uh, hold, carry on mm -hmm. with, uh, with the experience. And uh, the other soul will leave. Like for example, my partner, my present partner that I have, uh, in her particular case, She's had, um, when she was born, she came in with one soul. And uh, mm -hmm. at age 21, that soul left and another soul stepped in. And that soul took over because the, the, the original soul said, okay, I'm done with it. That's all. I, I came here only to have that part. Mm -hmm. Then that particular soul stayed in her body until she was 44. And then at age 44, that soul says, I'm done, I'm leaving. And mm -hmm. another soul came in. So she's on the, she was on the third soul. 
So that carried on for a period of time. And then about almost two years ago, uh, that soul says, I need to go for upgrades. So, <laughs> so I'm going to leave. And it brought in a temporary soul to come in. And that temporary soul was for four months. And so uh, my partner, I did not know her when she had the first soul or the second soul. I only met her when she had the third soul mm -hmm. in. So we were, we were together for a little while. And then, of course, her soul contacted me and said, listen, I'm going to be leaving and I have to go away for four months, but I'm bringing in a temporary soul to cover for me. And uh, I've selected one that would be able to, to be able to navigate. I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> my partner did not know that. And it was just a few days before, because I, I, I was given notice of it mm -hmm. several weeks before. And a few days before, I said, I, I kind of asked my partner, I said, do you realize that this is going to be a soul swap? And she goes, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Right? And I said, oh, okay, so you haven't been informed. <laughs> you know? So I said, in such and such a date, your soul is leaving and a temporary one's going to come in, right? And she thought, whoa, okay, that's pretty weird. And I said, well, you know, <laughs> you know you've already had two other ones before, which she kind of recognized. Yes, I understand that. Uh, I said, but this is going to be a placeholder. Basically, it's going to be temporary for four months, right? And uh, so she says, okay. So the day came and her soul left. And she, was no, she had no soul for one day. So at that point, she felt completely empty inside. It was like, oh, my God, you know, this feels weird. You know, I don't. But what was still communicating was the computer and the entity, of course. But there was no soul. It was, she felt like there was something empty inside. Mm -hmm. The next day, the replacement soul came in. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the vibration's different, the frequency's different, the characteristics are slightly different, more impatient, more whatever. And it started to create a little bit of a, a shifting within the physicality. And it felt strange because I connect soul to soul with most people, mm -hmm. and I, not only physically, entity-wise, but also soul to soul. And it's like now there was a stranger <laughs> to me because mm -hmm. I knew the other soul i didn't know this soul to the point it was quite unusual feeling because there was i recognized her i felt the human emotional love but i didn't mm -hmm. feel the same soul connection which was different and um, then of course the other soul was very um was different in a sense where it had less interest in playing the 3d game as the one that was there before was a little bit more open for it it wasn't totally into it but it was a little bit open to it and so her characteristics started to shift she was not the same person on so many levels mm -hmm. i'm not saying drastically you know but enough that people noticed in fact she went to see a therapist that was doing another therapist um a practitioner that was working on her body to to kind of do some work mm -hmm. and she had seen her several times and she was a friend of ours so she went for an appointment and she didn't say anything to her and she put her on the table and she's doing it. she goes you're not the same person you're not the same soul at all you know mm -hmm. she picked it up right away it's different signature different everything else and but a lot of people that knew her more intimately at a, uh, and understood her on a soul level noticed it was a different soul altogether. So anyways, after the four months happened, uh, the, that soul that was temporary placeholder left, and then there was one day with no soul, and then her original soul came back in, or not the original, but the one that was there before, uh, which was number three, uh, came back in, and I'm telling you, uh, it was it felt different. It was much more energized and now she does energy work on people mm -hmm. so She normally has done energy work on me uh, In the past, but because of the way my energy works and so forth I, I rarely feel anything with her, but other people get you know 
powerful transformations go on with her. Mm -hmm. So I was having some health issues, and um, so she said, "Well, how about if I do some new energy, do some energy work?" And I thought, "Okay, well, I mean, whatever it is, even if it's just a teeny bit, I'm okay with it, right?" But this was the first time after the soul left for upgrade and came back. Mm -hmm. so she started doing energy work, and it was intense. It was like, "Holy smokes!" I mean. Look at the power. She was so much more powerful. And mm -hmm. I was the first one that she was experimenting with. And I thought, wow, you came back supercharged. I mean, this, and it was very powerful mm -hmm. and it was very beneficial for me too. And uh, so since then, I mean, of course, uh, she has progressed quite a bit because of that four months that it left and when it for its upgrade, plus the energy work and the stuff that she does now is much more powerful than it was ever before. So uh, these things happen. Now, when it comes to what you were saying about um, another soul coming in and muscling in and saying, oh, you know, you're out, I'm in, I've taken over or something like that. That, that really doesn't happen because there is a, uh, what you call higher authority sort of thing that kind of oversees that. So it doesn't take your sovereignty away at a soul level to say, well, oh, you're bumped off this physicality, I'm taking over type of thing. Or goes in and starts to fight over it. You may have a, a soul that wants to step in and if your original soul says, you know, I'm iffy about leaving, then that other one can come in and they can kind of share it, take turns a little bit, mm -hmm. because that one is kind of one of the ones that's looking at taking over because the other one's going to leave. So there's going to be a period of time that could be doubled for, uh, but it's going to go from one to the other, like navigating, it's going to swap seats sort of thing to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, but that usually doesn't go for a very long period of time. That usually is only for a shorter period of time. And when I say shorter, it can be days, weeks, months, sometimes, but it doesn't really go beyond that. It doesn't go like years or anything of that nature. So you'll have that kind of taking turns. Uh, when it comes to saying a possession, that's different. That's an entity. That's something has nothing to do with the soul itself. The soul can get caught up in it. Uh, especially if the soul allows it, um, but in a way, but I wanted to mention something else that's part and parcel of that. Um, oh, geez, it slipped my mind now. Hmm. The, the subject is, is a, a sovereignty of the soul over the body. Yes. So, you know, if you're going to go back into it and say, well, one taken over, multi-personalities, for example. Some people say, well, what are the multi, uh, multiple personalities? What is the schizophrenic, the, you know, bipolar, all that stuff, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in many cases, there's several, there are several categories. You can have that one part, which is usually temporary, where the two souls are communicating and they're stepping in, or one is becoming the passenger for a period mm -hmm. of time. So you can have inputs from that, but usually that's not a personality shift per se. It doesn't really shift the personality that much. Mostly it would be a more subtle part of it where mm -hmm. you know another level of wisdom comes in. For example, somebody comes in and, and then normally if you know them, they're very uh, asleep sort of state. You know, not very uh, conscious, for example. But then all of a sudden, they're at times that they're like, wow, look at the consciousness that they may carry because they may start talking with massive wisdom and <laughs> so forth, right? So that could be that more upgraded soul that's stepping in and, and now sharing, okay? Other things that can happen is also channeling. So if that soul says, okay, I'm going to open myself to channel from another soul that from, uh, from uh, another level, coming from mm -hmm. another planet or being a non-form or has been on the planet before but is a non-form now, you can channel that or you can channel a version of, from a parallel, parallel world uh, soul type thing. So you have that part. The other part that comes in, which the multi-personality can come in at times, uh, is 
where entities attach, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have other entities that are free. For example, say there's gonna be several entities that don't wanna leave the planet because it still wants to attach to physicalities, to other physicalities. Mm -hmm. So you can carry more than one person, uh, one entity. You have your home entity, the one that's basically the governor, and then you can be attaching other entities. Now, what happens that that usually doesn't become a higher entity because entities that are much more evolved are higher uh, of a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. Normally, do not stick around and start attaching to other physicality unless it wants to communicate. And says, okay, I'd like to communicate to Charlie because I don't have a physicality anymore. So it will, uh, uh, you know, ask that entity that's in one physicality with that soul, say, can I come in for a little while and, and, and communicate? And it could do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when people are very low vibration or they drink a lot or they uh, take certain drugs and so forth, their vibration lowers so low or if they're really caught into drama or caught into, mm -hmm. sometimes even religion does that. And, and you know, if you're really into fear state and whatever else, because it proposes that, it lowers your vibration to a point where entities that have a lower vibration will find, oh, there's a matching energy, I can go in there. And, and then you can be attached entities, you mm -hmm. can have several entities. And then that's where the battle comes in because they're gonna start fighting for, for uh, navigational uh, position to some degree. And you may have people all of a sudden change completely personalities and, mm -hmm. you know, and will, you know, be more than one person can be one person, then a two person, then can be three person or whatever. Um, so that that's one person, one, uh, another aspect. The third aspect it would be is a fragmented ego. So what happens is the ego fragments and kind of starts taking on different personalities. So maybe there's two gene pools it can tap into, so the ego mind can actually take on the different, um, how can I call it, different characteristic uh, or lineage characteristic viewpoints, and it will fragment itself. So basically, mm -hmm. the ego will be one, two, and then the soul, and then the entity. You got now four different parties kind of dancing in one phys physicality. Now, normally that's kept in check. So like we do have it, and I'm sure you probably notice at times your ego will say one thing and then it says something else, and then you have your higher part of you coming from, a, from this level of communication, which is not, you know, it's from a heart mm -hmm. chakra point, which is now you know, also communicating into your right brain and and then communicating to the left brain and so forth. But you can have all of those uh, in check. So it's a, it takes turns kind of fitting in. You're not going to go too far off with one personality versus another. There's still a similarity. There's a blending. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's certain parts of you that come in without, you know, showing up as schizophrenic or showing up as bipolar or, or you know, uh, possessed or anything of that nature. Now, mm -hmm. if, if um, a soul, now this is the other part, the souls tend to leave a lot. So if a soul is leaving a lot, it opens the doorway to have more entities kind of come in because that energy is not keeping them at bay sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Or if it's astral traveling and it leaves the body empty, sometimes you're going to have these stragglers come in that are from the astral plane to come back attached to you <laughs> sort of thing, mm -hmm. which are other entities, but these entities are not from human form, they're from other uh, incarnational aspects, or um, the astral plane has lots of positive negative stuff going on there, and there's a lot of different energies there too. I don't wanna to get into too much of that, but because mm -hmm. uh, it kind of creates another opening, then there's a lot of explanation that has to go into that to, to, to yes. play that. So, um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in regards to all of that. You know, it's not... So Sounds like right. politics. What's that? Sounds like politics. In a way, and not quite, but in a way, it can get messy. Mm -hmm. But in essence, there's still a major observance that oversees that so that, you know, you're not kind of a total mess, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. 
because if you're choosing at a soul perspective, like your soul is not choosing for any of this stuff and it's not open and it's not leaving long enough and it's not creating all those openings, it, it has control of how much of anything can come in mm -hmm. or what will um, attach and not attach. Do, do we have uh, time for another question? Uh, yes. Okay. Reflecting on, on this, uh, let's say, dynamics, um, why is the human body so valuable? Why, why are souls are attracted and want to get incarnated into a human body? And uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, creations in, let's say, on Gaia, trees, uh, uh, let's say, uh, animals, uh, and whatever, that is also, a, a, let's say, a valuable experience as well. What's, let's say, um, I, I read something somewhere that uh, uh, dolphins and orcas are using more of the uh, brain than humans do. So, is let's say incarnating is in dolphin has that say more virtue than being a human virtue and so forth? Well, there's a difference because when you're looking at in regards to densities, if you're taking Gaia, earth elements, that's first density. If you're talking about uh, plant life and so forth, that's second density. Third density is animals and your typical human. Fourth density, of course, is more evolved humans. But what's so particularly attractive to the earth plane is because the earth plane was actually is very experimental. There's a lot of new so-called technology being used. And when, mm -hmm. I don't, when I mean technology, technology on a spiritual sense. Um, because the pla that, that's going to take a while to explain, so I'm not going to get into the details. We can play with it another time. But in essence, what happens is that we have extreme polarity here. The human physicality itself uh, operates within this polarity, but it also has sensorial experiences that are very enriched in comparison to other, uh, oh. other forms that exist and other playgrounds too. Mm -hmm. if you take you take human the human dna we have 12 for most humans not all mm -hmm. for most humans we have 12 typical dna strands okay? mm -hmm. there's more than 12 strands of course mm -hmm. but there's 12 different types of strands each one is from a different species so we have different we have 12 different species combined uh, and each each DNA strand has encodements from various species, has telomeres, which are antennas that receive this communication and connection from these different species, which make up the human uh, physicality, but also the programming and how we're done with, you know, the matrix and everything else that's in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in place, that it is quite different than most other uh, there's, there's a level of uniqueness, but also what's intriguing about being on planet Earth is that we are going through a major, powerful transformation, which is collapsed time, and we are using all the polarities, but also higher levels of consciousness, and plugging it all in and fast-tracking everything so that everything is so compressed and happening so instantaneously mm -hmm. And also with timelines collapsing and opening it up into a fluidity so that really what exists is only moments, uh, which each moment creates only the next moment. We don't even actually have a future per se because we have potentialities, but potentiality with no form, potentiality with no, no uh, design because we are designing it uh, each moment. So what's so particularly interesting is a soul coming in here gets to feel much more of what he has never been able to uh, experience even on having many, many, many different uh, physicalities on different earth planes or different planes of, uh, of uh, playgrounds because basically what a planet is, is a playground. And, uh, so, the, so in other sense, it's kind of uh, a sensory playground 
while being on the other plane, it's not sensory, it's, let's say, astral. So, yes. Um, and what about, let's say, being a dolphin or an orca? They, they have uh, extended the senses as well. Correct. They have the echolocation, which we don't have possessed. Correct. Correct. So uh, the, they're, first of all, they're species from another planet. Most, most of Earth life here is uh, their species from other planets that have been slightly mm -hmm. adopted to be utilized here. But yes, the dolphin's experience, I mean, uh, it has certain things that we uh, don't have active in ourselves because we've kind of deactivated uh, many things. Because we're, uh, even as a physical form from our original design, we mm -hmm. have many more capa capacities and capabilities than we are utilizing. And that was, there was a whole purpose of how that was all turned down, turned off. Of course, now we're looking at reactivating most of that at some point in time. And some of that has already started. But, you know, you take the dolphins and the orchid and, and so forth. When they're here, when they're doing what they're doing, um, uh, they're also receivers. They're receiving and communicating and, and so forth and, and putting that into the collective of the soul collective too, uh, in essence. So there's a, another level of enrichment that, that has occurred. So there are going to be, you know, um, certain species that are coming in mm -hmm. to observe. Now, in saying that, a lot of the souls that have been coming on to the planet are not you know, souls that have ever been on planet Earth. Many of them are coming from other galaxies, other planets. A lot of them are coming from non-form that have never incarnated. There are uh, species that are coming from other complete solar, different star systems, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know that are coming in. So there's, there's even much more blend taking place over here, taking on a human form and so forth and, and adopting and modifying it and so forth. There's so much going on. It's, if you have to look at it, it's just, it's mind blowing for how much of it is taking place right now. Um, how are you in, how, how are you in a time with the time? I have five more minutes. Okay. Um, as like regarding this, this, let's say, uh, um, I would say collage of human experiences. Okay, um, how do uh, all souls, let's say, let's say experienced soul, human souls, okay, are character characterized uh, or let's say differentiated from new souls, and um, not just by reading the aura, but let's say uh, let's say uh, characteristics of of the personality. Okay. Usually, uh, um, okay, when we call old soul, new soul, uh, basically, I mean, all the souls are the same, but what an old soul is referred to is a soul that has had many, many experiences and has become more enlightened versus a soul that has never had incarnation, never had taken on form, has been much uh, limited to its exposure. But then there are souls that are actually new new brand new in a sense where they've first time they actually become not separated but signatured or encoded to have a, an isolated experience while being in the collective so it's always been in the collective so uh, th that particular soul still has access to everything that's going on because it's still mm -hmm. part of it but when it comes in as a new soul per se a soul that is now being signatured it actually trims off its accessibility to uh, the vastness of sourceness so that it can actually start fresh in its in experience. Now, it never comes in as fresh as the originals because there was so much territory that didn't even exist. Now there's territories that does exist mm -hmm. in the playground because you're looking at the whole tapestry. Now there's already a lot there. So it's coming in. Now, how do you differentiate? Normally, a brand new soul will come in, and it depends on if it's coming in for the purpose of carrying a certain level of enlightenment, so that new soul will not have baggage, per se, a lot of experiences. But it also has source experience much more connected to that. 
that's one series. Another series of new souls will come in and not have any experiences and will be completely open to play with whatever it chooses to play with. Um, but it gets new assignments. That's going to take a while to explain that part too. But then when you're talking about the old soul, that soul is experienced. That soul has experiences of different can have different planets, can have experience in human form. Uh, so it knows how to navigate much more. And there's a much more calmness, much more wisdom that will, will relay f for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it has access to other levels of consciousness rather than a limited access where it's just focal point as a grant. So for example, you could take a new soul that has more source consciousness but when it comes to connecting to the human experience, it doesn't know how to navigate the human experience as well because it's never had one. Uh, it's never taken on form before. So everything is new for that perspective. But it has a, a wisdom of sourceness sort of thing. Where a older soul that has access has access to wisdom of sourceness, but has also had incarnational experiences on this planet and other planets and so forth, will come in much more experienced in navigating and will have wisdom on how to understand the operating system of the human, for example, or That's the operating of a That's next level. About. Sorry? Let's say uh, an old, an old uh, soul will be a street smart Yes. Well, uh, yes, I, I lack that smart, <laughs> that wisdom. Yes, yes. That, <laughs> I have technical wisdom, but I lack this. Uh, <laughs> so the street smarts, that's good. Um, thank you for you for saying that because that's a really good uh, analogy there. So the, the street smartness is actually has levels to it. So you got street mar smartness of planet Earth. So it's actually evolved and learned so much about how to navigate on planet Earth and how it's been that. But the next level of street mm -hmm. smart is from a level from a, a collective consciousness, then there's a galactic consciousness, and then there's a universal consciousness. So it has navigational experience of how it is on other planets, and it may have memories of that, and may have accessibility how that works, or how it's on different galaxies, or how it's on different dimensions, how it is on different densities, you know, and stuff like that. So there's different levels of street smarts that you can gain. So when you can say, mm -hmm. well, a really experienced old soul has street smarts of planet Earth, street smarts of all the other levels too, yes. Okay. Okay, are we out of time? Uh, yes, we are, actually. So okay. uh, I, I'm very grateful and uh, I'm still excited like a child <laughs> playing with you. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward for our next uh, meeting. And next uh, meeting, it will be much, much more fluent and we have less uh, technical difficulties. I will be much better prepared. Perfect, perfect. Yes, we'll have some more fun. And uh, so we'll connect in a few days. Uh, I think yes, we, have already days. Scheduled, we have already scheduled yes. that. Yes. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, come together okay. again and play some more. Yes, that will be Yom Kippur, uh, the aton atonement day for the Jews. Oh, right, 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 right. Yes. Yes, looking forward for the atonement. <laughs> are you are, are you uh, heavily involved in in that or, or? No, I'm very secular. I say I would say I, I'm uh, the opposite of a sec of a, of um, of an observant is a uh, the heretic. I'm I'm heretic, oh, really okay. heretic. <laughs> okay, so you're you're not closed up as much. That's good. Well, I, I'm I'm, very, I'm too broaded. I need focus. <laughs> right. Well, it's good because then the conversation doesn't get limited and it doesn't, you know, the filters don't come in as much uh, because, you know, if, if somebody is very into it, uh, then the community, we wouldn't be talking about what we talked about today. I, I'm very, let's say, uh, deprogramming myself. Good, good. And releasing the drama and, uh, let's say, disassociating the drama, if I can. Right. Perfect, perfect. Okay, thank okay. you, You're and uh, have, have a, a, let's say, a, a good day, and uh, for me, it's good night. <laughs>
Oh, right. That's right. Yes. We have a good day today. Yes. So have a good night then. Okay. Okay. Thank you.